Praise the Lord and welcome to this channel. My name is Bernard Ikeria. More than delighted to have you on board. And without wasting any more time, I would like us to dive into prayer. Father, we thank you for the gift of life that you've given unto us. I'm asking you, Lord, I'm availing myself as a vessel to teach and to minister your word. I am praying that, Lord, the Holy Spirit, as we go along with my viewers, may the Holy Spirit carry us along, bring enlightenment upon our understanding, bring revelation and bring clarity to the questions that we have in our lives. And I pray that you begin to answer those problems, that those, those questions that have troubled us for a long time. Bring understanding, O King of Glory, and let the darkness, the, the ignorance that the enemy had uh, sealed our mind with. Lord, vanish in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, and I bless you and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. You're welcome uh, once again. Today we are going to be looking at a topic uh, called the curses that are carried by names. A name can carry a curse. A name of a person is not just for the purpose of identification, but it has a lot of spiritual implications. And it carries a blessing or can carry a curse. A name is a vehicle by which curses are propagated, by which curses can be carried, or blessings can be carried. And so today we are going to look at uh, names that carry curses. Why are we learning about this? So that those that never identified that they had names which turned out to be curses in their lives, they can be able to know it and seek for deliverance. And those that have do not have these names, but yet they are yet to be parents and give names to their parents, then they can be extremely very careful when giving uh, names to their children. So today, I am saying that curses can be propagated, that curses can be carried by names, that names can be a vehicle by which a curse is carried carried by a person, carried in their lives. And uh, today we are going to look at two key personalities, characters in the Bible that are going to give us a hint, that are going to educate us how a name can easily carry uh, a curse and become an affliction, a thorn in the flesh. How a name can hijack a destiny of a person and cause torment and lamentation in a person's life, cause tears, cause sleepless nights in a person's life. It is very important that you may know, because the Bible says, my people are destroyed. That is in Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, lack of understanding. Lack of knowledge that names can carry curses. That a name can become a menace in a person's life. So, we are going to be, there are two characters that we are going to be looking at. We are looking at Jabez, and we are looking at a woman called Jezebel. Two characters. Those will be enough for us. Once I am done with that, my purpose here tonight will have been accomplished. And I believe with this, the Holy Spirit is going to register some level of understanding that is going to help us to be free for those that are in bondage as a result of names. So today we are going to look at First Chronicles 4 verse 9 up to 10. And uh, this is going to be revealing to us about the, 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 name, the name Jabez and what actually it stood, uh, what stood behind this name. So 1 Chronicles 4, 9 up to 10, the Bible says Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth unto him in pain. This, uh, so far, they have explained to us the meaning of the name Jabez. In, it's already stated uh, in this session of the scripture that it refers to pain. It refers to affliction. And so verse 10 says, Jabez cried when he identified that his name meant pain. And this pain now was beginning to be reflected in his life. 
when he realized that his destiny had been hijacked and the root cause was a name and a name was causing uh, problems in his name the uh, in his life the bible says Jabez cried unto the lord cried unto the god of israel oh that you would bless me and enlarge my territory let your hand be with me and keep me from the arm so that i will be free from pain and and god granted his request So we are looking at the life of Jabez and the name that was given unto him. A man goes to lament and cries to God as a result of a name. When you look at this, the Bible says Jabez's mother decided to give a name, decided to prophesy because a name refers, a name is a prophecy is a prophecy into a person's life so jabez's mother named him jabez which means pain and then jabez which is pain cries out unto the lord that he may be blessed and that god would enlarge his territory and keep him from pain so if Jabez cries to God to keep him from pain, what this actually meant is that a name can cause pain. A name can cause affliction. He cries to God and says, God, keep me away from this name. Keep me away from this name. Because the name here According to 1 Chronicles 4, 9, up to 10, he says Jabez was more honorable than his brother. And his mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. What that scripture now means is that the name did not only cause pain unto him, but from this statement where he cries out and says, Oh God, enlarge my territory. A name can bring a restriction to your life. A name can arrest your promotion. A name can cause a limitation in your life. And so when he realized that he was faced with the limitations, he was not being promoted in life. He was faced with all kinds of calamities, all kinds of affliction, left, right. When he realized that a name could do hinder, a name hindered the blessing in his life, he went and cried to God. His plea, first of all, before the Lord was that, God, I want you to replace this name. I want you to take away this name, Jabez. For he cried out to God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm. A name can keep the hand of the Lord from you. And therefore you are susceptible. You are prone to be harmed. You are prone to be cast. You are prone to be rejected. You are prone to meet trouble. You cannot be protected as a result of a name because he cries unto god and says oh god let your hand be upon me and keep me from harm what was keeping the harm of the lord what was keeping the hand of the lord from him was a name a name can keep the hand of god from your life because of a curse that is behind and so he cries to God and said, take away this pain, take away this name. It is not specified what name exactly because the Bible says God answered his prayer, answered his request. The request of what? Of taking away the pain. What is the pain? The name Jabez. We don't know whether God replaced it with the victory. We don't know whether he replaced it with the blessing. But what we know is that he answered his prayers. 
What we know is that he answered his plea. His request was granted. And the request was specifically that God would take away the pain, would take away the name, that he would cause a spiritual, a surgical operation in the realm of the spirit, that his spirit would be separated with this name, the identity that was behind the curse that would be lifted from this name. And so required a surgical operation for him to be delivered from this name. So the name Jabez, this name altered and prevented and hindered a blessing in this young man's life. How do we know? Because otherwise Jabez could not ask God to bless him. Why would God, why would Jabez ask God to bless him? It is because the name Jabez had caused him a lot of tears and a lot of pain. It was a curse which altered, which prevented, which ended, which kept him in stagnancy. Which kept his life from being propagated, his destiny to be being realized. This name hindered the blessing of God to be realized in the name of, in the life of this young man, Jabez. And says, God, take away this pain, take away this name. So a name can prevent blessing in your life. A name can place a limitation over your life. Why? Because Jabez, in his prayer to God, he asks, extend my territory. The word extend my territory, that statement reveals that he was limited. He was fixed on the wall. He could not be promoted. He could not be elevated. He could not expand in dimension. And so he cries out to God. But before we proceed and we dig up more stuff, we want to understand what originally. We want to understand the clan and the bloodline of this young man, Jabez. From the beginning of First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 1, the scripture clearly reveals that Jabez was coming from a blood lineage. He was coming from a, dis, uh, he's a descendant of Judah. And when we look at the life of Judah, he was entitled, he was privileged to have a blessing, to be a leader, to be a powerful man. But by a simple word, by, by just a name ceremony, uh, alters everything, alters the destiny. Because this young man, Jabez, according to First Chronicles 4, verse 1, he says, the title is the descendants of Judah. And in this blood lineage, there are many people, names that are given until we reach Jabez. In this blood lineage, these were are proclaimed to be powerful. They were rulers. They were mighty men. For God had blessed them. When you go to the book of Genesis 49, Jacob is preparing to depart from this planet. Is planning or is about or is aware that he's about to die. And now he calls his sons and says, come unto me, surround me, and I tell you what exactly you will be in the future. I want to prophesy in your life and tell you what exactly you will turn out to be. And amongst the sons was Judah. Judah was the son of Jacob, from which Jabez now is a descendant. So Jabez is an ancestor. Jabez is a descendant of Judah. A son of Jacob. And let's see in this clan, in this bloodline, what was programmed. What did you, uh, Jacob, their father, their, their patriarch, what did he proclaim? What did he say that Judah would turn out to be? And what kind was there a curse? Was it a blessing that was running in the bloodline of Judah? 
And so we look at uh, Genesis 49 verse 8 up to 12. The Bible says, it, this is now uh, Judah, uh, this is now Jacob proclaiming what Judah would turn out to be and his descendants from which Jabez comes from. So the Bible says, Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down to you. You are a lion's club. You are a lion's cub. Judah, you return from the prey, my son, like a lioness. Who dares to rouse him? The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from beneath his feet, until to whom it belongs shall come, and the obedience of the nation shall be. And he will tell, and he will tether his donkey to a vine, his cord to the, to the choicest branch, he will, he will with his garments in wine. He will. He will was his garments. In wine his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes will be darker than wine. And his teeth whiter than milk. When you see. From the bloodline of Judah, they were programmed by their patriarch Jacob. He prophesied what they would turn out to be. And he said, from, the, from, from this blood lineage, there will be rulers. The brothers of Judah would come and bow before him, making him the head, making him a ruler. He said the sector, which means leadership, which means rulership the authority to rule would be propagated in this bloodline until Jesus Christ is reflected because Judah because Judah gave rise to Jesus Christ he comes from he comes from the bloodline of of Judah that's why the bible mentions him the lion of the of the, of, of the tribe of Judah and so Judah and all his descendants, from which Je uh, Jezebel, I mean uh, Jabez comes from, they were programmed to pro uh, they, are, they were programmed to progress. They were programmed to be mighty. They were programmed to be rulers. They were programmed not to fail, but to be mighty upon the face of the earth. Those were words that were programmed by Job. I mean by Jacob. But now we can see a woman who is aggrieved. We don't know what happened to the mother of Jabez. This must have been extreme, extreme pain to alter the destiny of a child to such a painful outcome. Using a word she prophesies and alters all that Jacob had proclaimed in the bloodline of Judah, to which Jabez is a descendant. I jack the destiny of Judah, I jack the destiny of Jabez and turns it into pain. Words. We are prophesied and proclaimed in the bloodline of Judah, and they were programmed. And words are spoken in the form of a name, and the registers, the programs, the whole blessing that was learning, that was running in the bloodline. So Jabez's mother, in the other words, cast his son at inception. And so the mother through the name, prophesied what his son would be. What he would, have, what he would be first with. He was rewarded. What life would reward him? That life would reward him pain. We don't know what pain Jabez's mother was going through. She could have been a single mother because they do not mention of his father in this. 
They are pointing us to the mother because in those days in the Jewish culture, it is the mothers that used to give names to their sons. That used to give names to their children. Now we have no idea what Jabez's mother was going through. Probably she was a single mother. She did not have a support of a husband because the husband is not mentioned in the scriptures. Was she a single mother? Was she troubled financially? We don't know. Was she rejected women? Maybe the, mother, the, uh, the husband had the other women and so she was a rejected woman. Now this gives us an example of what is happening to us today. Many women are not financially supported. They are rejected there with their husbands. Many women, they are raped. Many women were rejected the moment they discovered that they were pregnant. Their husbands abandoned them. And so throughout the pregnancy, they went through affliction. They went through pain. They went through tremendous emotional breakdown, torment and affliction. Their souls, their spirits were ejected with the pain, with the agony. They could barely make it in life. They could barely be, sustain their lives and the babies. Even throughout the time of pregnancy, they never thought they would make it. But finally, by God's grace, they make it and they give birth. And at inception, because of the bitterness and the anger and the disappointment, They are inspired by devils, by spirits of agony, of pain, of unforgiveness of this man that caused this such much pain in them. And so they decide to name a name, give a name to their babies, to their sons, a name that hijacks their destinies, a name that hijacks and causes affliction and pain. And that's what the mother of Jabez did exactly she prophesied a curse in the form of a name and now this curse began taking shape in the life of Jabez the curse prophesied over Jabez took effect immediately from inception I believe this child was first with sickness was first with the rejection from uh, his agents suffered school fees issues they never left the hospital they were all always in the hospitals if something was lost from the neighborhood they trusted it even when it was false to Jabez sickness rejection dullness Society rejected Jabez. He was rejected with his own brethren. Rejected by the mother. Rejected with the father because we are not seeing the father coming here in the picture. Rejected by the mother. Rejected by the father. Rejected by his siblings. Because a name causes rejection. A name causes the curse of rejection. A curse. When a, when, a, a, when a name is cast, when you're given a name that causes a curse, then you are rejected. He was rejected by his brethren, was rejected with every person. So from inception, this child, the curse prophesied over him, began to take effect. Sickness upon sickness. Hospital visits upon hospital visits. Rejection left right rejected by family rejected by society rejected rejected uh, rejected at, at at work rejected left and right nothing came in his way that was good lacked school fees But the Bible says when he attained the level of maturity and realized that his predicament, his problems, his affliction was when he did his investigation, 
when he tried to inquire from the family and from the mother the circumstances that surrounded his birth the circumstances that surrounded his name when he realized when he looked through the bloodline and realized from the other uh, the rest of the clanmen uh, the rest of the people that were in the bloodline of Jabez of, of, of Judah that he had a name that was unique a name that was related to a curse then he was more than purpose to go before God to set things and to set the record right and to make sure that his life is aligned again in a way that is honorable that is that will cause blessings to come he cries unto God and say oh God take away this pain in other words take away this name substitute this name that is associated with affliction he says expand my territory when his brethren were expanding doing businesses prospering in the marriage prospering in their careers uh, 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 prospering uh, at school in everything that they were laying their hand their hands upon they were prospering why because a blessing already was running through their bloodline which was proclaimed by judah their patriarch their descendant their ancestor and now, throughout all these, these uh, uh, his brethren were prospering, but he was limited. He was anchored in one position. He was restricted. He was fought. His destiny was hijacked. When he realized this, when he did a spiritual mapping and realized this, then he took the matters before God and said, Oh God, I cry unto you. Just like some of you are going to cry unto the Lord and say, Lord, Take away this name that causes pain. Take away this name that has anchored me in poverty, that has anchored me in sickness, that has anchored me in failure, that has caused limitation, that has caused sabotage. He said, oh God, that you may stretch your hand. Stretch your hand so that I may not be harmed. It therefore means with this name, Jabez still with this name, they, he was not protected. He was vulnerable to sickness. He was vulnerable to poverty. He was vulnerable to broken marriages. He was vulnerable to barrenness. He was vulnerable to unproductive life. Why? Because a curse was anchored on his name. A curse was anchored on his name that would not let him go. That would prevent the hand of the Lord. When we have a curse, we are susceptible to demonic attacks in our lives. We are not protected. A curse invites devils, invites is a doorway of spirits to invading a person's life. As long as you have a curse upon your life the hand of the lord is kept away blessings are suspended the promises that are in the bible you will be the head and not a tail your basket will be overflowing all those blessings will not manifest the bible says amongst thee there shall be none that is barren but with a curse Devils, demonic spirits of barrenness will have an open invitation, a legal right to come in your life. So he realizes that he was not protected. He realizes as a result of curses in his life, he was susceptible to demonic attacks, to afflictions in his health, in his career, in his family. He was susceptible to demonic forces of divorce demonic forces of sickness of affliction and so he says lord take away this name take away this pain substitute this name that i may rest that i may have a blessing coming into my life a name is very key when it comes to our families 
and the clans from which we come. And that's why a particular clan gives a specific name. Why? For identification. If you have a name, and that name when they were giving you, they did rituals. That was a covenant by name. And as far as I'm concerned, that name is under a demonic curse. The purpose, if you're given a name in honor of a spirit, then the spirit will become a part of your life and will begin manifesting the characteristics of that spirit in your life. So the curse began to travel this man until he took the matter in the courts of God to sort out what the name had caused in his life. Jacob has programmed the Judah to be prosperous. He has programmed the Judah that out of him shall come rulers, shall come great men. He uses a word and he prophesies and everything is moving on the course. Then another figure in the form of a mother who has been afflicted, who has faced some situations that are difficult, also using words, prophesies upon his son by giving him a name, Jabez, which now alters the destiny, the God-given destiny of this young man and turns it into a curse. We are also going to use words for those whose names have caused affliction and they curse upon their lives. Because the Bible says you can alter this. When you read, uh, you read Isaiah 54 verse 17, it says that no weapon forged against you shall prosper. Every tongue, mark the word every tongue. Every tongue that has programmed into a curse, that has programmed your destiny, that has hijacked your destiny, he said you will condemn it. Every tongue that has condemned you, you will cancel it. The, you will cancel it. You will terminate the curse that was levied upon you, upon your name. Let that curse be lifted. Let that curse be broken. Let that curse in the name of Jesus be altered. May the Lord change your name like he changed the name of Jabez. Let your name be changed. A name that meant pain, let your name now be turned unto joy. A name that caused pain, let it be turned into joy. A name that was a curse, be called blessed. Where you had no victory, have victory in the name of Jesus. So, excuse me, a name represents the character of a person. Let me explain this. When the Bible says that now Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, this is what it means. It is the name of a person that carries the honor. Your name is a vehicle that carries the honor. That carries your honor. A name is supposed to bring honor to a person. Not a curse. Honor is attached. When God changes, we're looking at the events. When God changed the name of Jabez, he says now he's, he became more honorable than his brethren. A name, a better name is going to proper, is going to, to set you know, high above your brethren. Just like Jabez's life was set higher above his brethren. For it is written that Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. He superseded his brethren. When it came to marriage, he superseded them. When it came to prosperity, he superseded them. 
when they came to education, he superseded them. When they came to wealth, he superseded them. Why? Because his name now was carrying honor. So, just like we have seen that a name can carry curse, a name can carry honor. A name can carry honor. So name is supposed to bring honor to a person. Honor is attached to a name. So when he realized the pain and the dishonor that this name had brought to him, he cried out unto God. And I would advise you to do the same thing. Take the matters to the courts of God. The Bible says in Hebrews 4, that is verse 16, Come boldly before the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and grace in time of need. I believe you have established a need and the need is to change your name. That is afflicting. That is under curse and a spell. The Bible says he cried to God, let your hand be with me. So a name, a cast name can keep God's hand away from your life. Keep the hand of the Lord from keeping you. And now a curse becomes a door for every kind of demon, every kind of spirit to attack your life. In fact, if you have a name that is under curse, you are likely to die premature. You are likely to be chased from that job that you're working, that you are in. If you have a name which fights destinies, and it is the name that is registered in your transcript. The possibility of you being depromoted. The possibility of you being chucked, I mean chased from the job, are very high. You can never be promoted when your papers are containing that name. You better pray for those papers. You better... You better... Pray and break the curse. Every time that name is mentioned and, 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 and on your academic papers, before the panel of uh, before the panel of those that are giving you a job that are interviewing you, they are already seeing a curse. They are already seeing that name uh, as trouble. So a bad name is an invitation of evil, according to this scripture. A bad name is an invitation to evil and harm from the enemy. A cast name is an invitation of evil and harm from the enemy. A name introduces and invites affliction in a person's life. There are curses that are attached to names. We have looked at the life of Jabez. And as long as those names are on your academic papers, and you have a name which fights destiny, which fights career, a name that fights marriage, a name that means divorce, a name that means barrenness, A name that promotes joblessness. Then you can never at any one time get a job. You are on the streets. You are highly educated. But you can never have a job. And you can never trace it to your name. Jabez was conceived in pain. And then God delivered him into victory. I repeat, from this scripture and from what so far we have explained, we can authoritatively state that a name is a carrier of a curse. And a name can as well be a carrier of a blessing. <clears throat> A name can be a carrier of a curse. 
and a name can be a carrier of a blessing. That's why I don't play around with the names, family names. Every witch, every sorcerer, when they want to bewitch you, they will look for the name. A clan name, a family name. I am here also to state to you that apart from the bloodline which transfers gases from parents, from your ancestors, I am here to inform you that names propagate curses in clans, in families. It is one way of propagating curses. It is one way you find a family, you find a, a clan. They have reserved names particularly for that clan. Given to every member that comes to be born in that clan, in that family. They have specific names that identifies their clan from other clan, from other clans. Why? Because through these names, as they do the rituals when they are naming the children, the curses, the demonic spirits that are attached to this clan can now trace those names and maintain the uniformity. That's what makes a clan, you find a clan which has been infested with anger, infested with poverty. Every one of them up to the lowest they are there is under education there is poverty and is propagated by names when i discovered this issue i changed all mine in fact i began naming my children i never gave any of my child a name that is related to the clan where i came from i never I wanted to, uh, a family name. I wanted to each of these children as I named them. I named them Kiria. But when I discovered how my life had been struggling and striving and affliction and the pain left and right. I now decided with my wife. Not to give these children. A name that would maintain a clan, a family curse over their lives. I say, let me deal with a curse myself and break it myself, but it will not be propagated via names. Let me deal with bloodline curses, but not name curses. And so we had, and I have seen the results. Why? Because... Through our dreams, our dreams reveal a lot of things. Re dreams reveal curses in our lives. Reveal the kind of altars that we are facing in our lives. And often my dreams have been I myself struggling and none of my children. Why? Because there was no anchor to anchor upon these children. There, was, there were no names upon which a curse would now anchor itself. So in the nutshell, I'm saying that a name, the clan names, are used to carry curses. If this name, if, 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 if the name that is given by a clan is an evil name, if you're named after a deity that, that the clan worships, if in the giving of your name a ritual was done, like it is done in most of the cultures here in Africa, then that, is, that was a name covenant. You are being dedicated to the family gods. You are dedicated to the clan gods. And now, that spirit that is running in that clan, in that family, will now begin to maintain a certain uniformity if it is poverty, if it is sickness, if barrenness, if it is, if it is, um, if it is a fighting marriage, 
then you will fight marriage. If it is a premature death, and that is the uniformity you have, the role of this now will be to maintain that curse in that family. That uniformity. So a name does not only give identity. A name carries honor. As we have said, if it is an honorable name, if it is from God, a name carries blessings. A name carries, uh, carries uh, curses. A name can be used to arrest your destiny. A name can be used to propagate your destiny, propagate you to catapult you, to slingshot you to your destiny. A name can cause the hand of the Lord to be lifted. When the hand of the Lord is lifted out of your life, then you're susceptible to be attacked. You're susceptible to be attacked in your marriage, in your career, in your life, your health, your children. Why? Because of a name. So, so far we have looked at what can turn out from a name may not be very, 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 if it is a demonic name, results may not be, may not be palatable. A name whose origin is a demonic will cause a lot of injury in your life will bring uh, will bring out the identity of that demon to which you are dedicated to that spirit to that altar of the family to which you are dedicated we have said that the honor of a person is carried by his name when you look at proverbs 22 verse 1 it says a good name is more desirable than great riches So what that scripture means is that uh, it says that when you are making choices, it says choose a good name. If presented with a choice, you as a parent, you are presented with a choice to name your child. At inception, you can curse and arrest the destiny of your child or you can release that child into destiny. It's a powerful and mighty destiny. It says, when you are presented with a choice to make, it says, choose a good name in preference to riches. The best gift that you can give to your newborn child is to give that child a prophetic name that will, propel, that will propel that child, that will slingshot that child, that will push that child into his or her destiny, that will establish and make that child a mighty powerful person to contend with when that, uh, that child grows up. So that is how powerful, that's what the example of Jabez leads up unto. I said we are going to look at two characters in the Bible. We are looking at two characters in the Bible. We are looking at the topic that says curses, curses carried by names. We are looking at two characters. We've looked at Jabez. And so far we have learned a lot of stuff. And so I'm going to take you to another character, which is Jabez. Which is Jezebel, I mean, I mean Jezebel, I beg your pardon. We have looked at Jezebes. I, I mean, I mean uh, Jez, um, Jabez. We are now going to look at another character in the Bible. And that character whom you are familiar with, or which you are a character that you are, are familiar with, that is Jezebel. Now, when I was searching out to find out what exactly Jezebel uh, means, Jezebel is a name that means the prince. That means that my prince is Baal. This lady that we read about, this controlling, manipulative, this sorcerer, this witch woman. 
at her time when she was born she was given a name in the honor of their god called Baal she was given a name it is not only in nowadays but from biblical times from all the olden days names often were not simply given for the sake of being given names whether evil or not evil they were given with with something in the mind they were given to honor a certain deity to honor the gods to honor the king to honor important figures they were also given depending on the circumstance that the person was going through we have already looked at the example of Jabez that these were a very hard time for her, for for his mother she was a single mother she was left alone the, the husband took off he was abandoned with the pregnancy is uh, and now she was going through a lot of maybe financial uh, problems we are looking at the circumstances under which names are given names were given to honor important figures names were uh, more especially to honor the gods if you're here and you as a result of a pregnancy where your mother went to a herbalist went to a witch went, went to a sangoma then you have you, your pregnancy is as a result in honor of that God, of that altar, of that spirit, or that deity to which your mother visited or your father visited with your mother. So names were given in honor of the deities. If I was looking for pregnancy and I went to a warlock, an evil altar, and got that child, then probably from that altar, I am instructed to give a name in accordance or in honor of that altar. And so I am given that name. Now, just like you know that from an evil altar, you do not expect blessings. Then that name begins to become a pain, a curse, a torment in my life. Now, it was not only gods that we are honored but also in the bible most people gave names to honor the ancient of days to honor god almighty the creator of heaven and earth it was a means of appreciation appreciating god god was taken you through this god was uh, seen you through this and so as a way of honoring god people gave names that we are attached to God that brought honor to God. In the same scenario, that's how Jezebel, Jezebel, uh, um, Jezebel was named. She was named after Baal, who was the God of their fathers. The name was to honor Baal. So her name means my prince is Baal. She was dedicated. And so Baal, as we look from the scriptures, was a principality demon. I want you to understand this properly. We have said that Jezebel means my name. It means her name means my prince is Baal. It is a name that introduces this principality. It was a powerful spirit, a powerful demon, and in the honor. In the other words, I want to state very clearly, a name can be a spiritual altar. A name can be a spiritual altar. Jezebel 
was a spiritual altar of Baal. Because the name Jezebel means my prince is Baal. The word prince introduces what we call principality. This makes Baal a principality demon, a high ranking spirit. Because spirits have ranks. When you read Ephesians 6 12, it says, We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against rulers which are principal. We wrestle against principalities. We wrestle against authorities. We wrestle against the powers of darkness and spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. That is the ranking of demons. So, Baal here was a powerful spirit, was a principality. A demonic spirit at the level of a principality rules over a vast territory, a vast land, a vast expanse of land. So this spirit was not a mere family spirit. And that's why Jezebel had to rule over the whole of Israel. Why? Because we, she was, she was, through her name, she was an altar of Jezebel, I mean of, of uh, Baal. And the, the word prince means a ruler. And that's why in the scriptures, when they are interpreting, it is interchangeably according to the verse, uh, according to the versions in the Bible. They are saying we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And then in other versions, they say against rulers. Because this is a class whose mandate is to rule. They take over nations and they rule through leaders. They hijack and manipulate the people. This is a ruling class of spirits. They determine they determine the status quo of a certain given community or a nation. So they influence the minds of the people. And that's why Jezebel was an influencing woman, was a controlling woman. She controlled the religious men. And that's why she was able to win as many as possible prophets on her side. It was a powerful spirit carried by a powerful name, the name Jabez. So your name can be an altar, an altar to devils, to spirits. And this could be a very high ranking spirit that is not only influencing your life, but influences whoever is under your, whoever is in your arms, whoever is in your hands, you will get to influence them. If it is a marriage, you will influence a husband. The husband will be in your hands because you are with the spirit that influences, that manipulates, that controls lives. And is attached to your life as a result of the name. So when that's why when you see when a person is given a demonic name like Jezebel. Jezebel, when she assumed that name, she was devoted to the Canaanite gods of water and fertility. She was devoted to those things. Why? Because of the spirit that was in operation in her life. A principality is a high-ranking spirit. It is a ruling spirit and it dominates. No wonder Jezebel loved to rule, loved to control, loved to dominate, loved to subdue others.
He manipulated the whole of Israel and God was not comfortable with this woman. She was so powerful that even when Ezekiel had killed the 450 prophets of Baal, at the mere mention of this woman, when she said, I am coming after you, Isaiah ran for his life, cried to God and said, Lord, take me, for I am tired. That's how powerful that spirit was. Very manipulative, very domineering. But how was it attached to this young lady? It was attached to the name. That is how powerful the name is. You are not just carrying a name. You are carrying a blessing or a curse. That name will shape your character. That name will shape your destiny. That name will shape what you do. You're behaving the way you're behaving because of the name that is that you have that is attached to your spirit, that is attached to your name, that is attached to your life. Her character, the name shapes your character. The character of this lady Jezebel was synonymous, was concomitant with the name that she carried. The spirit to which you are named after in honor, that spirit will now, sh that spirit began, uh, begin to shape your character, to align it with his own spirit, with his own character. And so the spirit of Baal that was upon Jezebel began aligning a character with itself. The name shaped her character, aligning it so aligning it to that of Baal. So a name, if not carefully thought through when choosing for a child, then it can result into behavioral problems later on in life. I was hearing a testimony. Uh, I was hearing uh, Pastor Tom Mogerwa of Mutundwe uh, Fellowship. He said a father came to him and was puzzled with his son. The son could hardly do anything, could hardly lift his hand to do anything. He could not study, he could not do any core work at, at home. He was not active in anything. And as a way of concern now, because they try to discipline, they try to cane, they try to do this, they try to talk him out of the behavior. They try to talk this boy out of the curse. That was upon his name and was impossible. The name is in Uganda and it says Ndimogaria. Ndimogaria, for those that are listening in English, means I have only strength to eat. I have no strength to study. I have no strength to do any core work. I have no, I have no strength to do other things. He says Ndimogaria. And that boy, because he was prophesied, and they said he was named after his ancestors. And so these spirits now began to trace this name and they began to shape his character synonymously with the name that was given to him. And so the pastor realizing that this is where the issue was, he told them change the name. If you have a name that causes affliction, turn away from it. If you have your documents that are carrying that name and you're looking for a job, I am here to tell you you may not get a job. If you happen to get that job, you will not be promoted. 
if you happen to be there, you will be sucked. It is therefore important to take those papers before a man of God or yourself and seek the Lord. I advise you to go before the God, before our God, because Jabez did it. Be go before the throne of grace, the throne of God, and sort out that issue. Pray and break that curse behind that name. Change that name. Ask God to transform you. So, a name, if not carefully thought through when choosing for a child, then it can res uh, result into behavior problems later in life. Jabez's life, his character of manipulation, his character of, of, of controlling people, his character of destroying and killing people without any resentment, killing people without any resentment, manipulating people, taking people's uh, jacking power or sapping the power. This lady sapped the powers of the husband. She was ruling. The husband was a puppet. Ahab was, Ahab was a puppet. Because this woman, with the help of the spirit, had jacked and now the the whole of Israel was under curse, was under oppression. Her character was shaped as a result of the name and the spirit that was that her name was given in honor to. In honor to. So we have said that Jabez realized his life was a pain because his mother had made a mistake in naming him. And the most names are given in uh, that are given in our colleges. They are given with a ritual. If you have a name, as a way of introducing it in that clan, as a way of introducing it to the family altar, as a way of introducing it to that bloodline, a ritual was done. Certain words were proclaimed, summoning the spirits of the dead, summoning the spirits, uh, the aerial spirits or territorial spirit or aquatic spirits or they took you to the river when they were naming you they took you to the river with this kind of sacrifice and they introduced you then i am here to tell you that your name is under curse you better lease you better pray to the lord to lease you from that covenant your name is under covenant your name is under curse your name is registered on a family altar in that clan altar in that bloodline altar and what is running in your blood, in your bloodline, are curses. Curses of uniformity. There is sickness, there is poverty, there is all kinds of curses manifesting. And that's why you are not different from your brethren. You are not different from the rest. That is how generational, that is how blood curses. Um, they are not necessary. That's how, uh, apart from blood curses, that is how generational curses are propagated from generation to generation. By giving names that are being reserved particularly for that clan. And we have said that names, according to this example that they've given of Jezebel, a name is an altar. Just like the name of Jezebel was an altar. And that that name can shape the character of a person. It is not only to demons that names are given in their honor, but even God, throughout the Bible, we are seeing people that named, gave names to their children that brought honor. In Western Uganda here, most of the names are given to honor God. And we can see that in that region, when you look at their lives really carefully, they are blessed because God is names like Orinabiona, Oinomugisha, and they are attributing all these names unto God. Unlike names that are given 
in central that is in Uganda and the rest of the other regions names like Mukasa which is attributed to a spirit a marine spirit names like Msoke which is a demonic and is attributed also to a spirit names like Namukasa All most of the names that are given uh, in central and uh, most of the parts here in Uganda and, the, and, the, and the, the rest of Africa where cultures are very strong, names are attributed and they are given in honor of these spirits. They are given in honor. And so the child now begin uh, the character of that spirit to which this child has been named after in the honor of the spirit will now begin to manifest the exact traits the exact character of this spirit in the life of this person in the life of this child if your name means last then it is very difficult to fight last in your life you will sleep with the women you will sleep with the men the only remedy is when you identify that you are the curse and you need to break that curse there is no amount of prayer that you can pray to to get delivered unless you identify that name and get get rid of that name from your life. So let's look at how God used uh, how people used to honor God in the Bible. When you look at in the Old Testament times, children were usually named by their mothers. I have mentioned that before. Names like Hel, Eli, that is E L. Names that carried Yah, that is Y A H. Names like Eli, names like Yah. Now, I want to give you examples of names that God was attached as a way of honoring him. The name like Elijah, Elijah, Eli, Eli, E-L-E. -E. That word means God. So, attached to their names, there was a combination where they would combine the name and the touch to bring honor to God. And these names were meant to honor, to lift God on a high, to appreciate him. Depending on the situation, maybe they went through a difficult moment, they give a name to honor God who saw them through that difficult. Maybe it was a glorious moment. They still, as a well praising God, they give that name. So it's not only names given to honor other deities. Even God, people gave names to honor him almighty. The Heli. The word Heli means God. And these names are meant to honor God and ensure that God was a part of their children's lives. These names declared God's rule and who is like God. The godly names were given in such a way, one, that God would identify with that child, that God would walk with that child, that God would be a part of that child's life. The name, I repeat, that was given in the honor of God. The purpose was not specifically to honor God alone. But that as this child grows, God would be a part of that child's life. God would protect that child. God would bless that child. God would have ownership of that child. 
The name declared God's rule in that child's life. If the name that was given was to honor God, then that child grew up a very powerful and blessed child. So, if a name can honor God and ensure that God is a part of a child's life, then what happens when the name is after other deities, other gods? What will happen? Then you will experience this honor. You will experience a curse. The child will experience restrictions, will experience limitation. The child will experience bondage. That child will never progress. That child may never, may even die prematurely. So the purpose as to why people give us names that are demonic, one, they are honoring the deity that is running in the family. That is number one. But also, they want to make sure that the deity of that family goes with that person, goes with that child that grows up. And that that deity rules the life of that child. So your name now declares the rule of this deity in your life, declares the rule of that deity in your child's name. To this point, I am very certain, I feel satisfied in my spirit that I have said what the Holy Spirit would have desired me to say. So I'm going to pray for those people that are faced with the curses of our names. Father, in the name of Jesus, just like you changed the name of Jabez from pain to joy, from affliction or king of glory to blessings, just like you caused Jabez to laugh. Just like you made him more honorable than his brethren. Whoever is under the curse as a result of a name, I break that covenant. Whoever is attached to his family, demonic spirits, deities, by that name, I cancel that name in the name of Jesus in the realm of the spirit. I terminate I break, I annul by the blood of Jesus. I terminate that name confident that was established. I cast the altar to which they were dedicated. I release them from the bondage in the mighty name of Jesus. From the shackles of King of Glory. I release them from the character of that spirit that has been manifested in their lives. That is causing them to be rejected. That is causing a king of glory all kinds of trouble. The day his wife acquired the name. The day her name was added to that of the husband. Curse Curses came to that family. 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 Orama Shandorobo Koshikata, and they had no idea. They have been having afflictions and pain. The marriage was tearing apart. The relationship was tearing apart because on that certificate, the name that is on the cast was joined with the name that had a blessing. And as a result, O King of Gururi, the name has sucked blessings. The name has sucked blessings in the family, in the family, in the family. They are now jobless and they have no idea that this all began with the name. But in the name of Jesus, with the authority and power that is invested in me as your servant, I break 
I terminate, I override, I cancel, I subdue, I override, I terminate the curse in the mighty name of Jesus. A name curse be lifted, be lifted from that lady, be lifted from that man, be lifted from that man or king of glory, be leased in the name of Jesus. That child that has been afflicted, that child that has been afflicted, that daughter that has been afflicted, I break the curse with the mandate. The Bible says I will decree a thing according to Job 22, Rico Kobo sakata bakoya. Arima maseke telebe. Urima selebe korobo shanda. I will decree a thing and it will come to pass. I will make a declaration and it will come to pass. I now decree them free. I now decree them set free. I break the shackles. I terminate the shackles. I lease them, O oh God. Where the name anchored them, O oh King of Glory, through a family altar, into stagnancy, into affliction, into bondage, into barrenness, into utter progress. Roshandelebe kaya. I break. I break it, 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 and terminate it, and terminate it, and terminate it, and annul it, and annul it, and reverse the cast of King of Glory in the mighty name of Jesus into a blessing, into a blessing. I am praying that a blessing will come over that woman, over that man, over that man in the mighty name of Jesus. The trouble began. The moment they were joined in the church of King of Glory, and this on the on on the certificate of King of Glory, the marriage of their marriage again, a name was appended. A name of that woman was under the King of Glory on that certificate. That very instant, of King of Glory, a curse matured. A curse was activated. A cut. A curse of King of Glory. That is a curse of anti-marriage. Roshekelebi kandaba kosataya. Remende kosalabakaya. I break it. I terminate it. I subdue it in the name of Jesus. The moment of King of Glory, that man's name of King of Glory, was to put on this certificate account. Orama Shandad joined with his wife's name. Omako Sataya. Travel came. Travel began. Travel began in his place of work, in his family, in his children, and is the name. May the curses that are carried by the name be broken, be shattered, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. For it is written in Isaiah 49, verse 45, for King of Glory, that even the prey of the terrible, even the lawful captives of the mighty shall be set free. Even the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. Lord, I am praying. You say, the King of Glory, according to Isaiah 44, 26, in the name of Jesus, you said you will honor the words of thy servant. The counsel of thy servant will be honored. Those that speak to Jerusalem, and say you will be inhabited again. Those that say to Jerusalem that you will be inhabited again. Those that say to Zion you will be inhabited or come. You will come out of uh, desolation in the name of Jesus. Rosendelebekaya. I make a declaration as your servant. Let the curse be terminated. Let the curse be reversed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I bless. I honor, I glorify you. May through these waves of God, these people be released and be set free. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.